fifteen eight hundred. That's the number you came up. Yeah. Fifteen eight hundred. You yeah. came up with eight hundred. Okay. No. Why not fifteen nine hundred? I just. So that's. Oh. Uh, okay. F well, it's that time of year again. Mother's Day. Last year on Mother's Day, we did a video where I included my wife. This is Watch Kelly, my wife. Say hello. Hi. We are doing a video a little bit different from the last time. This is not going to be a collection video. We're actually going to be looking at some new releases. I'm going to be showing them to my wife. So for those of you who don't know, my wife used to be in the industry, in the watch industry, not the industry, I don't know what industry that is. <laughs> she used to be in the industry, in the watch industry, uh, and she actually worked for Panerai in Richemont for uh, about 19 years, something like that? Seven, seven. 17 years? Okay, sorry, 17 years. So she knows about watches. She knows about luxury watches. However, we're going to be looking at a number of watches that sort of span a few different price points, and I'm going to be asking her, number one, what she thinks of the watch, and also what she thinks the price of the watch is. So we're gonna start with the first watch. Is there anything you wanna say before we start looking at the watches? No. No, nothing, okay. That's good. Uh, have you bought any watches since your collection video? So we did a stated collection video. I'll link that above. Have you bought any watches since then? And that was last Mother's Day? I think, no, that was, that was, was it last Mother's Day? No, we did a collection. Yes, we did a collection video on Mother's yeah. Day. Have you bought a watch since then? No, that's probably why we're not doing another State of the Collection video that this year. That could be, that could be. But technically, you would not consider yourself a watch collector, right? Is that, would that be fair? By, to say? by marriage. Well, yeah, I mean, by relation, you are a watch collector, so. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the first watch. So these are new releases. There's about six or seven watches that we're going to look at. These are new or semi-new releases, and we're gonna start with the Space One. Now, you have photos of this on your phone. You've looked at all the watches prior, but you really don't know anything about them. What do you think of the Space One? Now, you can take a look at your phone if you'd like. It? Yes, of okay. course, and uh, because you've only taken a glance at this. Now, this is a weird watch that only recently came out. It was actually, I believe, announced during Watches and Wonders of 2024. It has a sun and earth and a moon all of those rotate you also have the day and the month it's in grade 5 titanium and you are getting an automatic movement inside it's a generic automatic movement but it is an automatic movement swiss okay. made what do you think first tell us what you think of the watch this is definitely one of your picks it's very futuristic it's I don't know, it's kind of got this like Space Mountain, Guardians of the Galaxy vibe going on. There's two, a lot. Two Disney references. Yes, yes, two Disney references. Um, Would you wear this watch? I think it's like a 42 millimeter, 41. It's I, on the larger side. I don't know what else I would be wearing with the watch to make that work. Yeah, it's an adventuring um, dial also. What do you think a watch? The dial is really cool. Yeah, it's meant to look like the night sky. That. Uh, the That's designer the here device. is kind of famous. The person who actually made the mechanism is kind of famous. Just to give you an idea, this mechanism and other watches, uh, I believe Ulysse Nardin did a, a version of this and those watches were in, I want to say the $60,000 range or $80,000 range. What do you think this watch costs? My initial reaction was about fifteen eight. Um, fifteen eight hundred. That's the number you came up with? Yeah. Fifteen eight hundred. You yeah. came up with eight hundred. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Why not fifteen nine hundred? I just want to. Because when you're pricing things like fifteen uh, eight is is better. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a softer. It's like a little less than six inches. Under okay. 16, All right. That doesn't make any. That makes not a lot of sense to me. But I guess I'm not in that. So yeah, you're well. still in this sort of world, but she's still in uh, marketing. So anyway, okay. So that was my initial reaction, um, but you know I really like not now that you're throwing in Elise Nardine and all these other brands and the famous um, designer and person who's working on the mechanism. I don't know. I could go either way. It could be like a very cool collab where it's a lower end price point and getting a, a super cool watch for that price point, or. Um, could skew the other way. This is kind of a thirty-two hundred dollars. What? Thirty-two hundred dollars. That's an awesome. 
It's a watch. really cool watch for thirty two hundred dollars. That's killer. I okay. Yeah, I think it's a really cool watch for thirty two hundred dollars. That that's is a is a watch killer that, watch that, for um, thirty two hundred dollars. I've I've actually pre ordered, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Is that how you soften the blow? Okay. Yes, well, so. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, let's move on to the next watch. So, the next watch, you could swipe so we could see which the next watch is here. Um, this is a watch that literally was just announced. I think Hodinkee came out with an article on it. There was uh, maybe a worn and wound article on this. I don't even know how to say the name, but I think it's Tolonetto or Tolonito or something like that. Oh, you better get it straight because this one is really cool. I think what they've done with the be beveling, the edges and the shape, this looks gorgeous. I don't know how big it is. It looks pretty chunky, but I think that would be fun to wear as a woman. It's definitely masculine. It's a de definitely a masculine watch. But the dial, can you tell me about the dial? What yeah, is, sure. What so it's, it it's Toledano and Chen is okay. the name of the watch. So... Uh, it's uh, basically a partnership between a watch collector and a designer. So that is a lapis dial. So this is taking inspiration from the 1970s, 1960s. We're talking about watches that were sort of uh, like the, the Midas from, or the King Midas from Rolex or Piaget, the Polo, and watches like that that came out during the time period. Uh, and they would have lapis dials. Lapis dials were very, very popular, lapis blue. And then this also takes inspiration from architecture. So there's yeah. this window in a, a museum in Manhattan. I think it's, um, I forget the name of the museum, but it's a basically a window that looks very similar to the case of this watch. It's asymmetrical. It's sort of popping out a little bit from the building. And that's where they took inspiration from. This also gets an automatic movement. It gets a pretty generic automatic movement. It's a Salita SW100, which is actually a ladies movement. And this also gets 904L stainless steel, which uh, if you're not familiar with that, it is basically uh, the steel that Rolex uses. So it's uh, a little bit more corrosion resistant or something like that. But it's really no difference to the, <laughs> the person who's wearing it. It's not heavier or any of that stuff. It just is uh, a little bit nicer of a material but what do you think what do you think the price on something like this would be um the inspiration behind it and this is going to be a limited edition of 175 pieces it comes out next week again this is another watch that i'm thinking of picking up but i would love this watch in, in our collection our collection yes <laughs> um another thing that is like i can't get over is the hour hand i love that cut Yes, it's At very the edge, cool. That's super, super cool. It's very cool. So, um, so you, I know you like the watch. Okay. What do you, you to what do you think about the watch? What do you think about the price? What do you think the price is on something like this? Very unique. Five thousand. Very close. It's four, literally four thousand dollars even. So they didn't okay. take your advice and price it like thirty eight hundred dollars. They no, priced it four thousand dollars. I don't even. think I would do that for this. I don't know. This is. Funny. Let's move on to the next watch. So you were pretty close on that. Okay. Um, this is a watch that I actually have owned. So I've actually owned this watch, uh, not exactly this exact this watch. So it I'm was a black say. version, a, a black coated version of this watch. Uh, this is the Amida Digitrend. So this is the reissue of the Amida Digitrend. The original Digitrend came out in the 1970s again. It was one of the first driver's watches or casquette, which was also made by Gerard Perigo. This is a automatic the first the initial version was a hand wound watch uh, you have a digital display from a hand wound watch and there's a prism in there it sort of uh, reflects the image up so you could see the time while you're driving so while the watch is on your wrist you could actually see the time right there this is a reissue of it so they're using i think a newton inside which is a so prod movement uh, it's their highest end movement and this is going to come on a bracelet. They're using uh, Jean Rousseau straps. And so they're going a little bit more upmarket uh, than the original. The original was uh, basically, it came out during the quartz crisis. They were trying to you know, compete against quartz watches. So they were trying to make it more affordable. What do you think of the watch? How much was the previous version? So the previous version, it's not really fair to actually kind of price it that way because the previous version used a very cheap stamped out 
Swiss um, hand wound movement, and uh, really, if you ever felt one in hand, they are they feel cheap. Was but I I owned one of them. Uh, it was a black version. I had like on a custom strap. I ended up selling it for bad reasons, and I actually regret selling it because I think the vintage versions are really really cool. I think this is a cool watch. But what do you think? The Amita Amita Digi Trend. That's what it's called. Okay, I. It's not my favorite. It kind of gives me like batteries not included vibes. Which is kind of cool. I like batteries. That was a good Yeah. Movie. I mean, it's like, it's, I get it. It looks almost, it reminds me of like an old, like a, an airline like seat buckle a bit. Is that? Okay. Because I, I it's could covered. See that again. Um, I remember the watch you're talking about. I think it's the same one. I think I said it's like you're wearing a VCR on your wrist. It looks like a little bit of a VCR, kind of. It has a basic off-the-shelf, but kind of a higher-end movement from Soprod, which is not exactly the highest-end watchmaker, uh, watch movement maker. But um, I, what do you think? Just take I a don't guess. know. I mean, it's is it it's digital. It is digital display, digital but it is display. not. It is not a, uh, a digital watch. I don't it's know. Twenty five hundred or yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah am I twenty really twenty nine 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 or something like that. Basically, it's a three thousand okay. dollar watch. Uh, I think they say that it's going to be $3,000 and then it's going to be going up in price. Okay. It will not go down in price. So that's what they're currently charging. I don't know what they're going to eventually charge. So that's on pre-order. All right. The next watch on this. Uh, it's new releases. All these releases are watches that I'm kind of interested in. And that's the reason why I chose them. Except for this watch. I wanted to throw in a couple of watches that I personally was not interested in. So this is the Tudor Black Bay Chrono with the pink dial. And they've done this for uh, a few of their watches now. But what do you think of this I was watch? wondering why you put this in here because it didn't seem like something that you would typically wear. Love the Tudor Black Bay. Um, I was Is this a, a lady's version of it? So it's pink? technically not because a lady's version. I think what they're doing here I is they're jumping on a trend. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's great when people wear pink. It's like men wearing pink I think is is very cool. I like it personally. I think I would wear it. But I think this watch is still around forty millimeters or forty one millimeters, so Is this twenty eight nine five? No, no. It's uh it's somewhere in that range though. Um, it's it's I think it's around thirty four I wanna say, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, it's not my favorite watch. I I'm not a big fan of Pink dials, not something that I'm going to go out and buy, but I thought I would bring it up here. All right, so moving on to the next watch, the Kith Tag Heuer collaboration. Now, you just took a look at the watches. There's a, a number of them. I think there's about 10. These are all limited editions. They're in collaboration with Kith, who you are somewhat familiar with, a streetwear brand, sneaker sort of inspired brand. Uh, they are quartz, so these are Formula One Tag Heuer's. Uh, they have the Kith name incorporated into the Tag Heuer logo. Uh, you're generally familiar with both brands, I would say, right? So what, right. What, first, what are your impressions of the watches and then tell us a price? I think they're fun. I think that they look really cool. They're definitely trendy. Uh, one of them looks like Sesame Street, just the, the yellow bezel and the green. Right, the so the colors, are, the colors a are a little bit weird. Like Some weird. of them are a little bit weird. Um, but I don't know enough about formula one to know if they're those are like specific racing team colors or something like that that makes it so i think they're doing certain limited editions for different um like uh, locations team. of kith boutiques i believe and then they're doing oh. some for specific locations for tag heuer boutiques and they're they're all inspired by okay. formula one because formula one is the name of the series so that's really cool uh, yeah and this is the the formula one was a watch that came out a long time ago um again they're like small 35 millimeters quartz watches pla they're using resin cases in some cases is it um, recycled plastic no it's not recycled plastic okay. so uh but they're using plastic and stainless steel okay what do you think what would I a think, watch like that cost i think that's really i love the i love that they're so many different versions of them makes you want to have get all of them um i i don't know what to i don't know what to do with this i want to say it's under a thousand um 
but it would just make it really hard to get. So it's a very accessible price point, but really limited. So uh, the original totally versions off. of these watches were kind of inexpensive. You can, you could have gotten these on eBay for around two to three hundred bucks. Okay. Um, these are going to be fifteen hundred bucks. I think a lot okay. of people got a little bent out of the shape on the price on these because. Uh, you know, fifteen hundred dollars for a quartz watch that incorporates so much plastic—that is a lot of money. You have plastic bezels on all of these, so, so it should have been a thousand. So it probably <laughs> should have been around seven hundred fifty dollars, is what okay. I was expecting when I heard about it. Um, and unfortunately, they went with fifteen hundred dollars. That's because Kith was tied into it. I don't know if they actually come out with these at a later date. Maybe they'll be a little bit cheaper. So. Got it. All right, so the next watch on this list of watches that we're looking at for this video, we have a Christopher Ward. It's the Christopher Ward 12X. This is their latest release. It's a skeletonized integrated bracelet watch, Gerald Genta inspired. It gets a beautiful skeletonized in-house movement. That is their SH21. It gets like five days power reserve. It's an incredibly good looking movement um they've really skeletonized a lot of the movement out and it has uh some anthracite tones to it it is stainless steel uh grade five titanium for the case grade two titanium for the bracelet really a lot goes into this watch there's um some loom that's kind of trick loom on there and you get 100 meters of water resistance so a lot goes into this yeah. watch yeah and and the manufacturers that they work with for the movement are some very high-end manufacturers uh, that also work with other high-end brands, very high-end brands, so like MBNF and and brands like that. So, what do you think of the watch, and then what do you think the watch costs? I, the watch is beautiful. I think when you're you look at it, it kind of like draws you in because there's so much depth with all of the different finishing on the skeletonized pieces of the watch. Um, so you worked the Panerai. What would a skeletonized Panerai? Now, they, I don't think they made any skeletonized movements that were not high tourbillons, but yeah, high complication. So, but what would what would a complicated or oh. uh, what would a skeletonized Panerai have cost? A hundred, a hundred thousand dollars. So or more. okay, so a watch brand that is Christopher Ward, maybe not uh, you know as high end as Panerai or. As high end as Panerai, some people would not agree that it's a high end brand. But anyway, I'm not. You know, I'm not going to argue. We're not going to have that argument. But uh, <laughs> another what video. Do you, what do you think? What do you think it would cost? Okay, any other brand I think would be would be we're talking maybe like fifteen thousand for a watch like this. Knowing that it's Christopher Ward, and I know that he's trying to trick me, Christopher Ward has a really great price point for the watches that it makes so i want to say that it's lower than that i want to say that it's maybe like six seven thousand because i'd say around five but that bracelet is looks really really comfortable to wear but it's gorgeous um the the angles and the the beveled edges and everything look really good so I would agree. So I would I would say that this is probably a watch that would have sold from another brand for about fifteen thousand dollars, maybe even more. Um, the watch sells for forty eight hundred dollars wow. on the bracelet, and it's actually cheaper than that on a strap. And full disclosure, wow. I I have one on order, so hmm. I have ordered this watch as well. So there's three watches on or this. Or anything list. for me? Yeah. Well, so anyway, um, okay. <laughs> That's really all the watches that I have sent you. I do have one wa one last watch that I'm going to show you. And okay. it's actually an affordable watch that I did buy uh, and has sold out. So this watch already sold out. It's a Timex uh, and it's raised by Wolves. So uh, another collaboration with a streetwear brand. Okay. So uh, raised by Wolves is actually a Canadian streetwear brand. Uh, and they make some weird clothes and some of their clothes. I, I, I actually like some of their clothes. This is their second collaboration with Timex. Okay. Take a look. Uh, tell me what you think this would cost. Also, press the crown. And Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so cool. So it is a resin case. So that means plastic. It's just okay. a fancy word for resin. Uh, it just has a nylon fancy strap. Word for plastic. 
fancy word for plastic. Okay. And uh, it is quartz, of course, because it does have Indiglo. When you press that button, uh, a wolf shows up. So that's their logo, actually, the Raised by Wolves logo. So That's cool. Yeah. So what do you think of this watch? What do you think of the watch? And then tell me what you think of the price. Definitely a fun watch. Um, it's definitely a fun watch. They're... This is cool. Can we show that on the? Can you show that on the screen? Of course. Of course, yes. I'll show it on the screen. Yes. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I was just playing with the button that makes the wolf face glow. So what ah. do you think? You think it's cool? You think it's pretty cool? It's fun. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think the price? I want to say two fifty. All right. All right. $250. Yeah. Dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No. No, yeah, actually yeah, I don't know. Actually it's a hundred and I think a hundred and nineteen dollars, I wanna say. Okay. Um Wow. I was over on that, but yeah. everything else I was about five hundred. I was surprised because it's a plastic case. It's a plastic watch with a quartz movement from Timex. Yeah, I know, but it has a like, notoriously affordable fancy. <laughs> uh but that's fine. Oh. Yeah. But two fifty is in the ballpark. Actually, two fifty would be an automatic from them you could usually get two in that price for two fifty. And um, but they have sold out of those. They sold. This is the second time they've done it. Second time they sold out. The first one that I bought, I sold and really regret. Um, but this one, I I jumped on. So so uh, a number of the watches on this list I have or will have. Hmm. So over under in the comments maybe how many watches has watch chris purchased this month i, I don't buy a lot of i do buy a lot of watches that's a lie um but uh i've been trying to not buy as many watches as i normally mm. do i have ordered a few watches so this is going to be sort of sprinkled throughout the year but if you remember from the beginning of the video i didn't buy enough watches this year to do another state of the collection that's not my fault Anyway, guys, I, I want to thank my <laughs> wife again for joining me Anything. here on Watch Chris. And uh, it's been a little while since we've done a video. And uh, I know that you guys like the videos where I feature my wife because um, she's so beautiful. And, mm. and I love her. So you can thank see you. We, we love each other. <laughs> um, and, you know, thank you. It's, it's midnight right now. Our kids are asleep. And... We're it's doing very this very late at night, so both of us are very tired. Uh, we do have three kids now. Last time you were on, you were pregnant with I our was. daughter, uh, who was born uh, happy and healthy and sleeping upstairs. Actually, woke up during this video. So, mm -hmm. and she we, never does. Yeah, which is weird. Uh, so, thank you for joining us. Thank sure. you for coming on again, and we'll do it again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.